You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another futuristic fortune telling mm-hmm. episode of Ask Drone You. I will be your co-host magician for today. (laughs) I'm just along for the ride as usual, (laughs) but my name is Rob and I have a good seat. And I got a great business partner. (laughs) That's all I got to say. No, Um, I'm I'm excited about this show. There is no question. So um, we are going to talk about what's coming up. Uh, I'm excited about that. Also a great time to say, bring in your drone related questions. There's a lot of new things that are coming up this year in 2021. I think we're going to see a big push uh, for, you know, faster and faster workflows, more convenient. But we're going to talk about all those things. What are kind of the 2021 drone industry insights or predictions and all i have to say is i'm gonna pull out my palantir rob Ooh, do tell palantir is a crystal ball from uh lord of the rings that showcases the future i thought you were referencing the company oh i was 100 percent. yes it's a huge investment that both rob and i are in so (laughs) (laughs) disclosure sec you're welcome yeah (laughs) But no, Palantir is also a mythological thing that foreshadows the future. Oh, well, I'm sure their name comes from that. It does. It does. Uh, And so the reason I brought this up is because that's kind of what we're doing here is we're kind of foreshadowing and forecasting the future. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's always fun. I, I like these shows. I really do, too, because we have no idea what's coming and we get to talk about it. Nor does anybody. Well, I guess somebody probably does. Uh, whoever is holding the money at the end of the road. Um, mm. Anyway, okay, so here are our 2021 predictions. And yes, for our regular listeners, I did write them down, so my level of ADHD will be muted today. So <laughs> that being said, uh, number one, I think the value of the drone is going to be realized at a level that we have never seen before. As more and more people are just questioning everything in general, more and more people are questioning why not use extremely efficient tools to get the job done and save astronomical amounts of money. And that article that you just pulled up with, Mm -hmm. which state was it? West Virginia? Was it West Virginia Department of Transportation? The West Virginia Department of Transportation is saving $300. And 43,000 doll hairs a month. Well, let's just clarify that. It was, that's what happened in one month. I don't know that that's a recurring thing, mm. but even if it's just one month, that's a lot of dang money. Pow, pow! That's a lot of taxpayer money, which I, for one, appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> and so should you. Oh, man, please use our tax dollar as well. Anyway. Okay, so the value of the drone is realized. What does that mean? A lot more businesses are going to be augmenting their existing business with drones. I'm already seeing this in verticals. I've never seen people using drones before. So this is extremely, extremely, extremely empowering. Also, when I say that the value of the drone is going to be realized, there's going to be a lot of different types of drones that you're going to see in 2021. And actually, the proof is in the pudding. As we got a report just the other day here in New Mexico that one of our instructors who now works at a very quick rising rising star company, yes, Easy Aerial, Impressive. Um, is having astronomical success with their tethered drone system that's also mobile. So don't think of a tethered drone as just a drone that just sits in one spot. No, no, no. This is a whole new level of bird. And um, I will be the first to apologize to Easy Aerial's CEO for not responding to an email because honestly, Peter was like, okay, he's ready for a meeting, go. And I'm like, whoa, Peter, slow down. <laughs> so excuse me. I'll take all the blame. Though. I'll take all the blame. But um, Easy Aerial is a perfect perfect foreshadowing indicator of what to expect as far as the value of drones being realized, but also them being used for verticals you probably haven't seen before. Okay, my second prediction for 2021, Rob, and then we got to get to Rob's number one, um, is I think we're going to have a quiet year, regulatory, speaking regulatory, Mm. Ali, if that's a word. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment given that uh, Remote ID just just uh, landed uh-huh. and praise Jesus. It's going to be a quiet year. Regulatory Let's wise. Hope. Let's hope. The FAA yeah. caused me more stress this year than I've had in my entire life. 
<laughs> well, other than the physical abuse as a child, but <laughs> details. But you know, like, so anyway, uh, again, thank you to the FAA for giving us a shout out in the Federal Register uh, uh, for remote ID. Do appreciate it. Um, so I think it's going to be a quiet year, uh, regulatory wise. Um, my third prediction: I don't think conferences are coming back just yet. I don't think we're really going to see a push for that. Maybe Q3, maybe Q4. Uh, one of the things that I actually wanted to talk to you about in our uh, annual audit was trying to do a fly-in again this year because, man, we were set up for success this last year. Yes, we were. That was going to be a just a blast of a time, but I, I think we'll, we'll... I hope it's 2021. I really do. I it would have to be late 2021. We already realized that. So I was already thinking September, October-ish, and I was already talking with you-know-who about getting out you-know-where. Um, but also, I would say that with the rise of the Cinewhoop this year, I would actually really try to open up the fly-in to a lot more FPVers, Cinewhoopers, Nick Lang, shout out, you're coming for free. I don't give a F if you're busy, you're coming because it's free. And yeah, and I miss you, buddy. So um, I say Nick Lang too, because he really has come out on the forefront. He has driven his business with Cinewhoop videos. He is pushing the envelope of flight, of visual storytelling to re-engage his clients. And he is probably the most successful DSP I've seen this year. So wow. as far as creatively speaking. Creatively speaking, most successful. I've seen some of his stuff with uh, Cinewhoop, and it's pretty stinking cool. Keep going, buddy. You're stinking badass. Cool. So conferences, I don't think we're going to see them just yet. Um, FAA Symposium, uh, that would be stunned if we had that this year. Um, and I mean, like, even CES, CES. CES is trying to have a conference this year. Hmm. And I think CES could have actually been a super spreader of 2020 when you really think about the timeline of COVID. But I'm not here to point fingers. I don't give an F. I really don't. My point is, is that CES is going virtual. And I got a really long email saying, hey, we would like to invite you to be media at CES again, as you have been for the last, I think they said seven years. And I was like, I've been media for seven hmm. years? Anyway. Well, that's cool. That is cool. Um, but I declined. Because I haven't found really a lot of value in these virtual conferences. It's just so hard to pay attention. It's so hard to get the engagement. And you don't get any of the positives that a conference brings, which well, is that like positive interaction with people that you kind of know. You know, you get to go have drinks with someone, learn about a cool new product. Like you don't get any of that anymore. But you're talking more on a, on a larger scale because obviously we have online virtual classes. But for those, it's... 10 people max. Yeah, it's but a whole we also do like a multi-camera switcher setup, you know. True. I got to say, uh, actually, after going to guitar lessons this last week, I, I wanted to buy a roadcaster for my instructor because it was driving me batshit crazy <laughs> that I couldn't see which string he was on. <laughs> so, I mean, the well, way that you do virtual is everything. Was he, was it live? Yeah, is it live? It was there? live. Okay. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yep. Well, maybe... Yep. A little tip and email would help him out. Honestly, I wish I had a little bit more money because I just want to buy him one because I really am inspired by that family and I think that they're incredible people. So huh. um, that being said, back to our predictions. Number four, Mavic 3 is coming. I think we're actually going to see it in the first quarter because we now know uh, internally that DJI did not want to release the next dr their next super powerful drone until the next administration. I think that had a lot to do with the NDAA. Hmm. The NDAA has been shot down. And dear news media, you are atrocious for not explaining why certain groups of people do not want the NDAA. And I'm talking about Section 230. And I'm talking about social media liability protections. And I completely agree that social media needs to be held accountable because I think that they are the toxic poison of our society. And yes, social media does a lot of good. It really does. But we have seen human propensity use it for negative rather than good. So without some sort of digital rights or something, I really hope, uh, yeah, a uh, rabbit trail. I, yeah. Section, <laughs> section but, 230 needs to go. But interesting. I would, here's how I'd summarize it. All or nothing. Does that make any sense? What all do you or, mean? Meaning the problem is this too much of a rabbit trail. I'll just leave I it know, at that. It really nothing. is. Sorry, guys, but we're not big fans of Section 230. But that would also affect us. So, But it's also the greater That's good. Okay. We need democracy okay. and objective democracy. Anyway, I'm done. Um, Mavic 3, I think we're going to see it because there is supposed to be a change 
of, uh, of the administrations. I don't know, man. When you're not getting your money from the Pentagon, <laughs> I think there's a lot of questions. We'll see what happens yeah, there. We, who, we have no interesting. idea. As someone who grew up in D.C., though, I've seen things this year I've never, ever seen before. Interesting. Um, that being said, next prediction, number five. Do you have a number one? Do you have a 20? I mean, like, I thought you had a prediction. I keep going down the list and not including you. <laughs> We're rolling. Keep rolling. Okay, Rob. No, um, here's one prediction I might throw in there, that, that some of the non-DJI drones will start to emerge more more prevalent. I have that on here. Oh, cool. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The rise of the American drone. There you go. Yeah, I couldn't agree there with you, you more. I think 2021 is the year of the American drone. And you know what's funny? You know who's winning this race right now? Is one super intelligent, driven, passionate mofo that I want to high five on a daily basis. I'm talking about you, Bobby Watts. Yeah. You are a stunner. Dude, Watts Innovations is doing stuff that Skydio could only dream of. And he has a team one one hundredth the size. So we're we're sorry, frat boys. I'm rooting this guy's for both getting of it them. done. I'm rooting for both of them. I'm rooting for both of them too, but I'm telling Skydio, quit the hype train. Quit it. Okay. One manufacturer, DJI, already did that and cost people a lot of jobs. Don't make the same mistakes. You guys are supposed to be more intelligent. Rise above. Okay. Next thing uh, that I would say. I think the anti-China rhetoric amps up. Mm. And also, I mean, we are planning on having Kevin Finisteri on the show here to talk about the ongoing security risk. There is still a security risk. Uh, he just did a presentation. We got to get him on the show. And we also got to talk about what are realistic solutions. Because when we overreact, sometimes we can cut off our nose to spite our face. Right. And that was going to be the DJI ban, which they blacklisted them. By the way, a lot of people are not talking about something that's extremely crucial about the DJI blacklist. You can tell people are kind of struggling to understand the, uh, the scope. Right. What does this mean? No more crystal sky. No more smart controller. Why? Do you remember when they put Huawei on that same entity list? What happened? They could no longer use the Android platform because it's a Google platform. Okay, there are going to be ramifications. Okay, now, based off of an experience I had with a couple mappers yesterday, I'm not really sure that that's a bad thing about the Crystal Sky. Because a lot of them were like, I can't update any of my third party apps on the Crystal Sky. Yeah. It was like DJI came out and said, oh, you could put third party apps on here and then never supported it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm tired of the hype train. I think everyone is. Um, and I want to make it clear to Skydio, to Adam, to G, guys, let's rise above. You guys are supposed to be it. Okay. You don't act like it and deliver half, right? We all know what happens when you overpromise and underdeliver. Please, for the love of God and for the love of the drone industry, don't do that. Okay. Uh, we are pushing for you, but we're not going to push when you're not pushing. All right. Moving on. I think micro drones are going to become more prevalent. So you said number six. Mm -hmm. uh, I skipped number five. I think there's going to be an Inspire 3 this year with an X9 camera. Hmm. I actually already see the camera. It's called the H20. Um, I think uh, anti-China rhetoric will rise. That's okay. number seven. Number six, you're number one, the rise of the American drones. Watts Innovations is by far ahead with the Prism. Phenomenal platform. Second in the lead, I got to say, is FreeFly. But I think FreeFly could do a lot more volume than Watts, but Watts is really more focused on kind of the, uh, he understands the client quadrant very well. Yeah. He really does. So enterprise, enterprise, enterprise. Uh, micro drones, I think are going to become more prevalent. That's my number eight. In what sense? Well, look at the Mini 2, right? The, the, the Mavic Mini, in my opinion, was a joke. Um, uh, I mean, that's why you never really saw m much on it. Uh, in fact, I was focusing more on the Skydio at the time than the Mini the Mini 2, though, is an absolute, um, I hate the term game changer, so I'm trying to come up with something I else. I thought you were trying to think of something besides game changer. I was like, game diversifier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. A force multiplier. Okay, here, let me give you the example. Okay, I think micro drones are going to become extremely more prevalent because of the micro drone rules in a lot of other countries. Okay, here's what I'm talking about. We know the Canadian Broadcast Corporation just bought Mini 2s for pretty much all of their journalists. Why? Because they don't need a license to fly it. Okay, mm. this brings down the barrier of entry to pilots. Okay, that means more and more people are going to start thinking about two things. One, should I become a drone pilot? No, Bob, you shouldn't. Okay, number two, 
Should I be using drones in my business to augment what I already do? Yes. Yes, you should. Okay. I think it's going to cause people to think more. Um, now, you asked a question, uh, and I think I was an asshole a little bit. I don't remember the question. Damn What's it. next on your list? <laughs> Damn it. Um, let's see. Micro drones will become more prevalent. Ah, the push for the micro drone will emerge as well. I think we're going to see a huge, huge push here in America to have a micro drone rule. I already know of a couple lobbyists who are like teeing up to do this. Uh, so thank you for you two. Really appreciate it. Um, and honestly, I think that the timing for this is so, so crucial because with the credibility of the FAA in question regarding Boeing and the 737 and everything, this is such a great time to say, do we really need to regulate these things as much as we are? And when I've heard three separate people, one of which is a former FAA administrator, say, and I'm just going to say it out there because this needs to get out there. And I've heard someone at another federal agency say this too. Should we really have gone after Raphael Perker? I mean, that was the thing that started all, right? University of Virginia, 2012. Should we really have gone after Raphael Perker? Every FAA executive and other government agency executive that I have heard on this particular issue says they absolutely regret doing it. Hmm. Interesting. That things would be so different right now if they wouldn't have done that. Wow. And a lot of people said it was yeah, an ego play, like a control thing. Yeah. So I think we're going to see a big, big, big push for the deregulation of micro drones. Now, I'm hoping that the American government doesn't respond as the Japanese government has responded. The Japanese government literally as of last month or very recently, Rob, said, OK, you can make really powerful drones sub 250 grams. Fine. Micro drones are now 100 grams. It's like, it's, I think it's 100 or 125. I don't know. Don't quote me. Yeah. But they pretty much took the weight in half. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. That, I mean, on. that's the easy way to go about it if you care to continue to regulate them. Governments are going to learn sometime that when you try to impose so much control, it's just going to be outright revolt. I mean, trying to learn that in the 70s with the trying to implement lack of credibility in their kids. That's a fascinating story, by the way. Hmm. Um, I, I think that people also, dude, who really controls the <laughs> It's society. Think about it. We have cell phone rules. You're not supposed to text and drive. The number one cause of death for motor vehicles, though, is distracted driving. We don't do anything about it. True. Yeah. I, I, and this is even probably more difficult to police than that. It's a, <laughs> right. I think we end on that bombshell. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> I got nothing. No, no, I got nothing. <laughs> I th no, I think one of the other predictions for 2021, which isn't I'm um, going out on a limb, but I just think the enterprise level is going to grow substantially. We're oh, seeing yeah. more large companies that are certainly interested in what we're doing. Yep. And in the insurance industry, other industries, construction industry, obviously, and... Uh, it's, that's going to continue. And with AI getting even more involved in what drones are doing, the power is uh, is growing every single day. And, and I think 2021 is going to be a good year for that. I couldn't agree more, Rob. In fact, I got one last prediction. I think we see the first ever augmented reality flight school. <laughs> well, I'm excited about that one. Yeah, me too, Bob. <laughs> I don't I don't know what this augmentary stuff is you're talking I, I about. I don't know but. about these visualizations. <laughs> I'm ready to get augmented, though. Uh, me too. <laughs> All right. Well, if you don't know what we're talking about, well, props to you. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. This is... Happy 2021. Happy 2021, everyone. We love you guys. Don't forget to audit your business. Work on your business. And we're going to do a new show uh, coming up next week and talk about what you should be doing to work on your business to prepare for this year. Competition is going to be hot. Lots of people were hurting in 2020. What are you going to be doing? Okay. Woof. Right on. I'm excited for 21. I am too. It's like, let's get flying. Be a good year. All right. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Dronia.